State Coach Ken Bone and student athlete Clay Thompson. Well, it's great to be here, and uh, we are obviously looking forward to another season after finishing not the way we wanted to last year. We're anxious to get back out there and uh, see what we can do and change our place in the standings this next season. We've got a few guys back like Clay Thompson, Reggie Moore, D'Angelo Casto, Marcus Capers, Abe Lodwick, and we feel that uh, we have a chance to be pretty competitive in the Pac-10. And we're looking forward to that. Question over here to the right microphone. What, the, what things did you work on in terms of improving your game? I, I noticed a lot of improvement from your freshman to sophomore year, but this particular offseason, what, what was the things that you concentrated on most? Uh, this summer, I, I really just focused on getting quicker and stronger because uh, that will help me be more efficient when I, uh, with my scoring and uh, just set my teammates up and uh, just improve my overall athleticism because uh, I think that will take my game to another level instead of just being – a little one-dimensional, be more versatile, and help my teammates be a playmaker. Question for uh, Clay. You've played the international competition. What uh, do you feel you got out of that, and how do you think it can translate playing in uh, Pac-10 now? Well, I got a gold medal, which was the best part about it. But I think I just... Um, what I took away from that was just that I can compete with anybody because I played against some of the better, best players in the world uh, my age. And uh, it just gave me a new boost of confidence when I went there, knowing that I could uh, compete with, with uh, some of the best kids in college, college basketball, and uh, some of the best kids around the world. Front left. Ken and Clay, you can both privately answer this. How do you analyze the last month of the season as far as Clay? Was there too much on his shoulders or did fatigue set in? Or how do, how do you analyze that from last season? I'm sorry, was that, was that directed for me or Clay? For both. And, and could you ask one more time, please? The, uh, the last part of this, this, you know, he had a great start to the season. Second half of the season might not have been quite what the first half of the season was. Do, do you think that? Perhaps there was too much on his shoulders, or maybe he got worn down physically. How do you analyze that? Uh, I think it was a little bit of both, but uh, I mean, that's the role I wanted to take, being a, a go-to scorer and one of the go-to players. That's why this is such a big year, and I think um, with the improvements I made this summer, I'll be that much more efficient. And uh, just uh, we got a lot of—I got a lot of help this year with uh, Reggie, D'Angelo. And we got some good newcomers. Uh, the ki uh, one of our, my teammates, Faisal, he's a really good shooter. And um, I'm looking forward to playing with Faisal because he can really score. So he's going to help me out a lot. I think we've been able to surround Clay with, uh, with better scorers. And maybe not so much of the load will be all on his shoulders like it was last year. When Clay wasn't making shots as a team, we were in trouble. And at that time, we tried to go to Reggie Moore a lot more, and uh, him being a freshman, he did what he could. But after that, we did not have other guys that could really put the ball in the basket at a level that we needed to in the Pac-10, be able to create their own opportunities to score. And with the addition of Faisal Aiden, like Clay mentioned, uh, with the work that Clay's done, 
Uh, and when I say that, the first thing that comes to my mind is Clay's known as a great shooter, but the other day in practice, when he ends practice in a scrimmage with 10 assists and one turnover, uh, that's pretty impressive. He under, he's getting a lot better understanding of that there's so much focus on him that he's doing a great job of setting up other guys. And then we have uh, Casto, who's now a junior, and, and Capers, uh, Abe Lodwick. So we're feeling like we can go out and compete this year and hopefully finish games at a better, at a better level. Any other questions? Down here in the front middle. Um, your brother, Michael, plays at Pepperdine. Uh, what is your relationship, and what was it like playing against him growing up? Uh, it was great. I mean, me and, my bro me and my two brothers, Trace and Mikey, we always used to compete because uh, we're so close in age. I mean, we grew up playing every sport together, whether it was football, basketball, or baseball. And uh, I mean, it was fun. And uh, whenever we have time, we still play one on one, and we still hoop as many times as we can. And uh, we played a lot this summer, and um, it's just great to see him play at Pepperdine. And uh, I think he's gonna have a big year this year. Coach, can you talk a little bit more about the uh, about your newcomers this year and who might be able to produce for you? Sure. We have three freshmen and a junior college transfer. I'll start with uh, the freshman. Andre Winston is a quick guard out of Seattle, and uh, he'll probably end up backing up Reggie Moore, but there's times that those two could play together. Andre's got a, a pretty good feel for the game, and like I said, he's a good athlete and very quick and a great defender. Patrick Simon, who's from Euphrata, Washington, small town out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> kind of like Pullman. And he committed to the program four years ago. He committed four years ago, and now he's finally a Coug. And 6'8", uh, 6'9", kid that has good instincts and can really shoot the ball. He's an outstanding shooter with a quick release. And I think he's going to be able to, to not only make shots but extend defenses because he is such a weapon from out there. We also have a young man out of Australia, Dexter Kernick Drew. He's about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and about 170 pounds. And I wish I was exaggerating, but uh, he's, he's a thin kid, very skilled and extremely athletic. Not sure he'll see a lot of time this year. In fact, we're considering redshirting him, red him but uh, he's got a chance to be pretty good down the road. And then our junior college transfer, was a guy that we wanted to bring in to, again, help Clay out so he wasn't uh, the only shooter or the only target on the, on the court to, uh, to try to stop. And Faisal's out of a junior college in Tampa, Florida, Hillsboro Junior College. And he's a very good shooter and actually a pretty good scorer. He finds ways to, to score off the bounce a little bit, too. And once he picks up our defensive schemes, which some of you are probably wondering, well, what are those? <laughs> but uh, He's, he's going to be a pretty good player, and he's going to be able to give us some good depth, which we really lacked last year. Question in the back left. Yeah, this is for Ken. Um, the conference obviously struggled, uh, especially from a perception standpoint last year. What signs have you seen that it's a, a stronger league, league this year? Well, it, it really helped the fact that Washington and Cal represented our conference well in the NCAA tournament, especially Washington. I mean, they could have even won that last game against West Virginia. And they lost a great player in Quincy Pondexter, but they're bringing some really good guys back, and they've recruited some very good players. So I think uh, with a team like Washington and the exposure they received last year, late season in, in the tournament, and and other players in the conference, like Clay Thompson, uh, this conference not going to be—it won't be down for long. Last year it was down, but it will not be down for long, and I think we will compete nationally this year.
Any further questions? All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Okay, one 